So my guys, Hotter Studio has just released the announcement and trailer for the next upcoming limited character. It is indeed going to be Claudia. Rip in peace, my fellow Cobalt B enjoyers. However, I guess it means that we have more time to save. You guys, not me. I gotta pull. I gotta make content. Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lace. This is a Tower of Fantasy video. And today we're going to be talking about, not this yet, we're going to be talking about Claudia. We're going to be talking quickly about Claudia's kit, the differences from the CN version. And then we're going to talk more about her team comps, where she fits in with the current meta and the state of the physical team, which is um, essentially not exactly that great. And of course, we'll wrap it up by discussing whether it is actually worth pulling for her or not. So Claudia, my guys, and I'm not going to spend too much time on this because because there's a literal wiki page that you can read, but she is essentially a physical attacker, a DPS, with constellations slash stars becomes a support. And so the name of her weapon is Gurum Blade. And this is a little bit important because it will come up in one of the constellations. And she is again a DPS resonance, which means that you can hit that resonance relatively easily compared to some of the later units in physical. They are released as tanks. This is actually a good thing because it will give you options. Next, we have a 7.5 on the shatter and a 12 on the charge. And if you guys have not watched my shatter video, I would highly, highly recommend it because this value over here, it means nothing by itself. Go check it out. Generally speaking, I think that charge works the same way as Shatter. Just go watch the video. However, this charge value and comparing that against Shiro's, which is at a six, makes me feel like I want to be spending a lot more time in Claudia because it means that I am able to get more discharges off. And then conversely, with the 7.5 Shatter versus Shiro's 10, and she actually gets a little bit more from her constellations, I do think that Shiro is the shield breaker. But let's discuss that a little bit more because it is seriously not as clear as that. Weapon effect. Grievous, I think this is probably one of the best ones considering its literal damage amplification. And if you guys don't know how to activate this, essentially charge up, get the full bar, get the flashing thing on your skill, and you're going to get your Grievous effect. And so before we go into the advancements, I do want to have a quick look at the skills themselves. Quick slash, jumping strike, etc, etc. These are very, very much like your classical aerial does more than the ground attacks. You've got a nice spicy dodge attack, which is leap attack in which you knock the target into the air. That's actually really nice. However, in a meta where everyone is spamming super armors and stuff, um, I would say that the utility is probably a little bit lower, but let's have a look at roam and unbridled flurry, which is going to be the skill and the discharge respectively. So the TLDR for roam is the ka-ching ult, right? It's like ka-ching, ching, ching, ching. And I will show you actually right here, this one right there, the ka-ching ult looking thing is going to be her roam skill, her E slash one skill, depending on your keybinds. And so the caveats about the skill is at first I see these values and I'm like, hey, that's a little bit wrong because the skill and the discharge and some of the attack chains, they all actually got buffed for the global version. Remember that the values of all of these skills, they're actually the CN values. However, the core skills themselves, I don't think anything has changed. So for Frigg, um, before her unnerf of the nerf, there were a couple of different mechanics like shifted here and there. There is nothing with Claudia. She is pretty much as she is here. Anyway, back to Roma. So the first thing is that when you attack the same target, it deals 20% less damage, which means that it is good for mobbing. It's a little bit less good, but still quite good for bossing. On the other hand, you have CC immunity as well as damage reduction of 50% while the ability is in use. Now that is awesome because it means that generally speaking, she is not going to be able to be interrupted during roam. But honestly, I think the best thing about this entire skill is the low, low cooldown, 50 seconds. And if you guys have been playing DPSs, like you've got your Samir, you've got your Crow, you've got your King, all of these like super super cringe, super long CD, 45 seconds or whatever. And when I see this 15 second CD, I think of all of the possibilities in which we could actually have some sort of like quick swap comp. Unfortunately, however, at the end of the day, this is going to be simply a damage skill with some immunity. There's not really any like utility or damage amplification on this. And so I would say at this point, she's looking more like just a DPS, not really suitable for the PVP yet. And before I go into the discharge, before I forget, I I did not mention that there is going to be a physical resonance here, exactly like how Frigg got the frost resonance. So for Claudia's discharge, Unbridled Flurry, I do want to show you first, but essentially she leaves behind a blade storm, which is actually really freaking sick. So let's see. 
Bim, and you see the blade. Okay, it's actually really hard to see it there. It's going to be a little bit easier to see it here, and you can see all of those damage numbers, the physical damage numbers coming out, and she is not doing the attacks. It is actually the blade storm that is doing it. And so when she uses this blade storm, she is also actually immunizing herself with the hyper body. That's I'm pretty sure this is all hyper body. So yeah, a lot of damage over here. However, I do want to talk quickly about her matrices before we move on. I see Shiddo, I see Crow, I don't see Samir. And that is probably because this list has been influenced by the CN version. Um, it's actually really hard because I was looking at a lot of like CN content and it just does not apply to us because they evaluated her with another physical DPS in mind. So if you guys don't know about the existence of Mark, this guy over here, he is a limited collab unit available on CN. I highly, highly doubt that Mark is going to be coming to global. But as you can see over here, he's got massive as freaking guns. But not only that, he is physical. He has high shatter, high charge. And all in all, if you do have a look at some of these skills, some of these advancements, he is is actually downright busted. So yeah, the reality is, is that Claudia had competition from your boy Mark, and also she did not have the resonance in which, yeah, it's still not over here. But coming back to the matrices down here, we've got the Shido, we've got the Crow, and we've got the Claudia 4. Okay, the other one that I would mention here is probably the Samir. And Samir, I always, always recommend on all DPSs, main DPSs. And you guys should know the reason by now. It's like such a good generic attacking matrix set. And then I see this matrix set for Shiro two times over here, which is good option for boosting damage and shatter. Gurum Blade does a fair amount of shatter with the skill in Discharge. Yes, but you don't really want to do that if you are going to be using her as a main DPS. And that is a really interesting discussion because both Claudia over here, as well as Shiro, they both were buffed from their CN variants. And so at this point in time, especially when they are the only two physical units in the game, it is really, really hard to gauge who is going to be the main DPS. My guess is actually going to be Claudia because Claudia has a higher charge. You want to be spending more time in the Gurun Blade so that you can get more discharges. And then when you do need to go to Shatter, you are going to head over to the Shatter. However, that is only based from the charge and the Shatter. And I haven't even looked at some of the skills in terms of who would be the main DPS. But from an evaluation and methodology point of view, that is exactly where I would start with the Gurun Blade as main DPS and then the Shiro with the Shatter. But I also got a shout out to the girl Shiro because she does incredible burst damage as well. All right, and so the next thing we want to talk about is Claudia's advancements because this is essentially the part that determines whether you should actually roll for her or not. The TODR of her first star is that whenever she uses a skill or discharge skill, she gives you extra damage. And this stacks up to three times. This is going to go up to 24 percent and so yes that is actually very very competitive with Tsubasa's C1 as well considering Tsubasa's only lasts for 15 seconds if I'm not wrong and the fact that this also goes up to 24 percent and lasts for 25 seconds this is almost like a direct upgrade. Moving on to advancement 3 the TLDR is that you are increasing incoming physical damage and shatter effects by 10 percent for 15 seconds. However what you do need to keep in mind is it's kind of like split in a couple ways you're going to be increasing your physical damage you're going to be increasing your shatter effects from physical and elemental weapons. So it's actually, from a shatter point of view, really good. But in terms of damage, DPS point of view, it only boosts your physical. For the five star enhancement, hitting targets with a skill or a discharge skill grants skill damage boost. So if you guys think of like the E or the one skill, it is going to be that one. It is gonna be boosted by 20% for 25 seconds. Honestly, I think there is potential here. I think there is potential for some kind of like quick swap or some kind of like line all of the skills up and then just let it rip kind of thing. However, that would actually have to be theory crafted pretty heavily because it means like sacrificing a more consistent kind of rotation. And then lastly, with the six star advancement, the TLDR is it makes your three star better. You get more physical damage and get more shatter. All right, so here is the part where we talk about whether you should actually pull for her or not based on these advancements. If you are willing to go to C0, so no dupes for her, uh, for her physical resonance that is not going to be here, then yes. If you want to play using the Shiro and the Claudia, yes, you should pull for her. However, if you are only willing to pull one copy of her and you don't want to use Shiro, then it is a hard sell. I would say that it is a no, do not pull for Claudia if you're just going to be using her in isolation. If you are willing to go to the one star advancement in which she is going to be giving universal damage amplification, then yes, you should actually pull for Claudia 
pull two copies and fit her into literally any team because that's essentially Tsubasa's role right now. And the last scenario is that you want to get real freaky with the Shido. You really want to run the physical. You want to go physical with the Lyra as well when she comes in, I don't know, like six or eight months or something. Then yes, you should go for either maybe the three star, the five star or the six star. However, generally speaking, the majority of her value in my opinion is going to be at C0 where she provides physical resonance and C1 where she provides all damage amplification. So yeah, that's kind of the criteria. And with that, let's move on to a little bit of team building because it's pretty interesting. But realistically speaking, I think you guys are probably pretty good at team building at this point. So I guess this section is to check whether you're right or not. Starting off with the goal of our team, we are going to play the physical team, Claudia and Shido. That is like pretty much non-disputable because without Shido, Claudia is not going to be activating that physical resonance. With this team composition, Claudia and Shido, we have a DPS as well as some level of shield breaking. And some people might argue again that Claudia provides a shield breaking. I would still say, mm, I don't think it's enough. I think you should actually have the Shido or maybe even the King or the Huma or the Meryl. And so as you can tell, there is no healing in this type of team comp, but in a lot of the end game content, so I'm talking bygone phantasm and I'm talking like your co-op modes in Frontier Clash hard, you're not gonna be taking a healer for your third slot if you are running the DPS resonance. It's more likely that you're gonna be like DPS and DPS and then like shield breaker and king, or maybe we could use Huma or something. They are better consistent shield breaking units that is not fighting against a C3 Shiro. C3 Shiro, Shiro gets pretty freaking cracked and you can probably ignore that advice. The other option is obviously to take healer. Nemesis, Coco, Zero, and again, this is really, really dependent on the rest of the other teams, the other three teams. If you do need the shielding, if you do need the healing, then yeah, go for it. However, if you guys are freaking DPS rats and you guys are freaking just going ham, slamming those freaking bosses, then I would probably recommend something like this. Break the shields, do more damage. Break the shields and do more damage again. But remember that if you are going to be playing a healer in the third slot, you are going to be depending on the Shiro and potentially a little bit of the Claudia to do the defense break. And then we've got these units down over here. Of all of them, I would say that Tsubasa is probably the most viable. Considering she's just going to be the damage buffer, you go in, slap her arrows out with the dodge attack, whatever, and then switch her out. But as for the other options, I'm talking the Samir, Frigg, and Crow, it is a little less likely or like they have a little bit less potential than the others because they are filling DPS roles in which you already have two that are, well, I still don't know which one is going to be doing more DPS. Claudia and Shido, they're both fantastic for it. And considering we're running physical resonance synergies, these three are gonna kind of be outclassed. And so the other option for the Claudia is to act as the C1 buffer, right? So where Tsubasa was used for her arrow, you dodge arrow into the three stacks, 15% damage buff. Claudia is essentially that, but a little bit better. However, only available at C1. So for example, some comps could look like this. You got Nemesis and Samir. Samir is your DPS, getting the resonance from the Nemesis. And then Claudia is your buffer. Or oh, this could have actually been Tsubasa over here. But this, in this case, Claudia, I think is going to be better. Better. On the other hand, if you don't need heals, maybe we could run something freaking sick. Like we got the Frig over here, we got the Tsubasa and the Claudia. We've got damage buff for days and hopefully you don't die from this, but you will be able to climb floors really fast or you'll just be doing a giga DPS. Or lastly, it might just be that you didn't pull for the Nemesis or the Frig and so therefore you don't have resonance. I think the best bet is going to be like your Samir and then your Claudia for the damage amp. And as you can see, there isn't too much shield breaking and then I probably go King over here or Huma or Meryl. I think you guys get the idea. I really don't think that this is a bad comp or like this one over here. It's just that slowly, slowly with these new resonance characters, these kinds of like random fruit salads are not going to be really used anymore. But it is certainly 100% viable, okay? And of course, if you need healing, Claudia can come out for your Coco, for your Zero, for your Nemesis, or maybe your King comes out for the Claudia and then the Coco, uh, in which your Claudia, remember, is going to be the Shatterer. I'm, I don't know. I'm still on the fence about that. I don't really think that Claudia is meant for shattering, but other people are saying yes. So we can only tell when we go and test. All right. And so that's pretty much going to bring us to the end of the video. It looks like Claudia is coming first. It looks like Cobalt B is not coming yet. I really hope that Cobalt B came first so I could try my luck on her. And if I had to pity again, then I, I don't know. I quit the game. <laughs> uh. 
However, it is at this point where I do want to pass off the question to you guys. Are you guys going to be pulling for the Claudia? for this S-Death looking character over here. Let me know down in the comments below. But otherwise, if you guys did enjoy this video or kind of found it helpful, then please consider leaving a like on it, subscribing to the channel and turning on that notification bell. And as my girl Claudia once said, all good things must come to an end. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.